Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation skill series and in this video we're going to explore internet services. So internet services first came to the IBM Cloud probably about two years ago uh, and in that time there's been an awful lot of interest in it and um, IBM have recognized the importance of it as well and um, certainly over the last six months there's been quite a bit of work on it particularly in the way that the, the service is offered and the plans that are out there. So in a nutshell, it's a service that provides a number of security and connection services, basically for web applications. So it provides things like distributed um, denial of service, attack protection, uh, firewalls, global load balances, and basically things that secure your website, but also help users um, get to your website quickly, so reduce latency and all those kinds of good things. So if you're running a website um, on IBM Cloud, then this is probably a service which um, you're going to be interested in, so, um, so it's good to find out a bit more about it. So it's built on software from a company called Cloudflare, and it's basically for use with your own registered domain. So, so to actually use this service, you do need your own, your own domain. You need to have registered it. So you can't just use it on uh, cloud.ibm.com. You need to have your own domain, um, such as, um, let's say for me, I might register a domain called jamesbelton.com. So, um, and I would need to implement internet services on that rather than uh, just the default domain that comes with IBM Cloud Services. So let's have a little bit of a look at the different services that, that this actually provides, because this does actually provide a, a, a whole package of services, depending on the plan that you actually purchase. So the main one is distributed denial of service protection. So there's not an actual um, service within the service that does this. Um, it's, it's something that's inherent in the service. So what happens is the Cloudflare software actually monitors the, service, uh, the, the connections that are being made to your service and it will warn you and it will take action um, if, there, if it detects a, a DDoS attack going on. It also provides you with a web application firewall so you can set that one up, set that up if you want to within your environment. It gives you TLS, DNS, um, it provides you with a global load balancer, um, you can have an IP firewall, it will do smart routing with you um, and you can do things like rate limit, limiting and caching with page rules. So I'm actually going to go into a little bit more detail on, on uh, some of these now. So TLS is, is a security measure, um, and you can actually determine with this whether or not your users can view your web server on a secure connection or not, and then actually how, how the connection from the internet services service is made to the Origin web server. So you can turn this off, so that then basically means that um, your users are not connecting to your website using HTTPS at all, so they're just coming in using HTTP. So this isn't really recommended um, if you've got a website that has actually got some kind of um, data on it that you actually want to protect. In those cases, you would normally use an HTTPS connection. The next mode is client to edge. So here, um, your client needs to collect, connect to, your, um, to, to the CI service, so the edge of the, the internet services service via HTTPS. Uh, but then internet services doesn't actually connect from uh, from itself to then to the web server using HTTPS. So it then goes from, so it's basically going client uh, to, to the edge using HTTPS and then from the edge to your web server using HTTP. So again, um, if you're doing anything which is which needs to be secured, so if you're, if you're um, sending data between from your web server to uh, the CIS um, services in just HTTP and that data needs to be protected and again it's probably not the best way to set it up. The next is uh, an end-to-end -end flexible. So this is where HTTPS is actually going from the client to uh, internet services and then from internet services to the web server. Um, but with this, it's not actually authenticated. So you can have a self-signed certificate effectively on your web server uh, because um, internet services doesn't actually check for a valid certificate um, and, and therefore no um, error will be generated when it finds itself certified or, um, or it's out of date or something like that. So again this gives you um, this gives you HTTPS um, basically from the client all the way to your web server but again use with caution because you're if, if you if you it's fine if you don't want a valid certificate but if you do need valid certificates then again this one won't actually work for you. The next type of uh, TLS setup is end-to-end -end and that's CA signed so this is where you actually need a signed um, and valid certificate uh, between internet services and your web server. So if you're, again, if your web server is um, serving information which is sensitive, 
then this is probably the setting that you want to be at. So that's sort of TLS in a nutshell. So next we'll talk about the global load balancer. So what this does is actually provide a load balancer which can balance for services across regions. So effectively what you're doing is, is creating a load balancer uh, from which users can then connect to your service wherever they're deployed across the globe. And you do this by effectively creating a, a pool of origin servers or your web servers um, and then uh, have your global load balancer point at that pool and uh, in turn users connect to the load balancer and the load balancer then distributes your traffic to the servers within the pool. Now one of the things you can do is actually create a pool which is for a specific region. So if for example you have a website and you have an American version of it, you have a UK version of it and you have uh, let's say a Chinese version of it and uh, you just want users from the US to, to go to the US version of the website, users from the UK to go to the U UK version of the website and users from China to go to the Chinese version of the website. Well, you can do that by putting the different types of website into pools and then when a user comes into the website the, um, the load balancer will detect where that user is actually coming from and will then uh, load balance the traffic to that particular pool. So if for instance I'm sitting in the UK it will recognize my IP address as being in the UK and uh, it will then route uh, my request to a pool of servers that are actually sitting in the UK. So that basically means I get all the UK projects, products rather, and I also get all the UK pricing. Similarly, if I'm in if I'm in China, I get all the Chinese products and pricing, and if I'm in the US, I get the US uh, products and pricing. Of course, if a particular pool goes down, um, then my request will still be routed to another region, depending on how you set that up. So this is actually a common use for internet services. Lots of people are interested in doing global load balancing. Um, the uh, the IBM load balancer that's in the IBM cloud will only actually um, do load balancing um, within a particular region. So um, so if you want to load balance services across regions then uh, this global load balancer in the internet services services is something that you'll, uh, you'd be very interested in. Uh, the other good news is there is a, a just global load balancer plan for internet services as well. So if all you want to do is global load balancing uh, and you're not interested in all the other stuff that internet services offers um, for a cost, um, then you can just go for the global load balancer plan and just pay for the global load balancer. Uh, next service we'll talk about is the IP firewall. So this effectively allows you to whitelist or block or challenge specific IP addresses, um, IP address ranges, um, IP address ranges or connections that come in particular uh, countries, the counties on there but it should be countries, um, ASNs and cider blocks as well. So, um, so basically, if you um, if if you decide that you want to block particular IP addresses because you know that they're um, they're they're malicious or have been in the past, uh, then you can do this with the IP firewall, and then um, basically that traffic won't then hit your website at all. Um, with the challenge, um, what you can actually do is if you want to challenge particular IP addresses or blocks um, of IP addresses, then um, effectively you can set those up and then when somebody on that IP address range connects to your website or tries to connect to your website then it will be challenged with uh, with um, something like a, a code that they need to type in that they see on the, on the screen. So again this stops things like bots actually hitting your, your web servers or the, which may be there uh, doing things which are malicious for example. Uh, you can lock down domains so if you only want a particular domain to uh, to access your website then you can do that through whitelisting. So if you do some whitelisting, then that effectively blocks everything else um, actually accessing your website. So again, if, you're, if your website is for a particular group of people or, or a particular uh, site, then you can do that through a, a, a domain lockdown. Browser integrity checks also allow you to make sure that the, the browser that people are, uh, that users are accessing your website from uh, are valid in some way. So again, it's a good way to um, block things like bots or malicious um, web servers from, uh, or web malicious browsers from actually accessing your website as well. Um, so smart routing, uh, so this is a feature that um, allows you to optimize uh, the path the data is taken across the internet. So again, this is automatic if you turn it on. Uh, what happens is that uh, uh, the, the service will analyze latency and packet loss as it goes across the internet and it will then detect the best route um, for your data across the planet. So 
Again, this is a way to make sure that your data is served quickly um, and is actually served via optimal route, so it reduces latency effectively for your users. So rate limiting is, is an enterprise plan only service. And what this is actually doing is protecting your website from denial, uh, distributed denial of service attacks, brute force and other attacks. So it allows you to effectively monitor and limit the number of requests per second uh, which are being made uh, from the same IP address. So if you switch that on, and you've got an IP address that's actually um, firing request after request after request at your website, it can detect that as a uh, DDoS attack and uh, it will then start to, uh, start to block that particular IP address in your website, it won't suffer as a consequence. So it also actually allows you to restrict, uh, restrict specific HTTP methods as well. Um, so again, it will um, again it will detect from all, um, whether or not your site is under attack uh, from uh, lots of different places as well uh, by by being able to restrict um, these specific methods. Um, so the cache replay page rules is the last one we'll look at. So um, so this actually allows you to store store uh, page content on on edge servers. So again, this is a way to uh, reduce latency uh, for your users because it actually puts content close to your users. So by, um, by actually um, uh, caching um, on, on edge servers, it means that if, again, if I'm accessing a website from the, from the UK, then if there's a, an edge server in the UK which has got some static content um, so, uh, cached on it, then I'll get that rather than have to go all the way to the web server which might be in the US, let's say. So files have a time to live, so um, so if you've got content which needs to uh, be updated every now and again, so let's say your static content changes, um, let's say once a day, um, then you can have a time to live setting. So every um, so every day that, that content will age out, and the next time there's a request, um, that request will go back to the web server, uh, but at that time that request will then cache the new page. So, um, so, so, so again, that's a good way of refreshing um, content um, fairly uh, in a fairly automatic way. So, as I say, this is really for static files. So, we're talking about images, we're talking about text files, and they're cached by default. Um, if you've got HTML files which um, which can be cached, i.e., they're static, then those can be cached too. So, these are the different plans that are now available for internet services. So, um, when internet services was first launched um, there was a free trial and I think there was also an enterprise plan uh, but over the the last six to eight months we've actually introduced uh, a number of different plans for, for different use cases so I'll have a, a look at those uh, in a moment when we uh, when we get onto the IBM cloud but really I just wanted to bring your attention to the fact that there are now lots of different plans okay so what we'll do now is we'll log into my IBM cloud account and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at internet services Okay, so here I am in my IBM Cloud account at cloud.ibm.com and I've gone to uh, the catalogue by clicking the, uh, the catalogue link here. So to, um, to actually get to, uh, or to actually find internet services, the best way to do it is to just start typing into the search bar. So let's type into the services and there it goes. Um, so it's under networking, it's under security and identity as well. So you can use, use these, uh, um, these menus here to actually find them too. So I just click on one of those tiles, and uh, what we see here are the different types of plans. So let's just uh, uh, quickly run through these because um, I think it's important to understand what these are. So the first plan is a free trial. Um, so if you if you're just interested in trying this out, uh, you can do so for 30 days. So you get DDoS protection, you get uh, a, a WAF, uh, so web application firewall some TLS, you've got DNS, you've got a global load balancer. Um, so, um, so if you just want to try this out, then probably the free trial is for you. So, uh, so, the, next, uh, so the next plan is a standard plan. So, um, so this gives you um, a certain uh, subset of the, um, of, of the services. So you get DDoS protection. Uh, so you can have that uh, uh, on or off. Uh, you can uh, have a web application firewall, you get TLS protection, uh, you get DNS, and you get the global load balancer. So in the standard package, you get these, um, these, these different features. Uh, enterprise usage, um, so again, if you want to step up and you're, you, you want to uh, do a bit more, then you've got the DDoS protection, you've got the WAF in there, you've, got the IP, you've then got an IP firewall in there as well. 
Uh, you've got your TLS, you've got DNS2, you've got smart routing in there. So this is where you're talking about optimizing your uh, your your traffic uh, from your users to your edge and, and to the origin. Uh, you've got you've got the rate limiting in there as well, and you've also got the global load balancer. So with the global load balancer on this plan, if you compare that to standard, um, you can go from uh, 100 origin servers in there, as, whereas there's only six within the standard package, and uh, you can also do five second health checks, where it's up to 60 second health checks in the standard package. Uh, you've then got your enterprise package, so again you get um, uh, some other various bits in here as well, um, which I'm just trying to see how diff how that differs uh, from uh, uh, from the from the enterprise usage in the enterprise package. But um, you can uh, you can see there that we've got you, you can actually do this <laughs> with 10 domains. So again, this is for one particular domain on the enterprise usage. The enterprise package is actually for 10 domains. So if you're a large enterprise, um, chances are you may well have more domains um, than uh, than a smaller enterprise. So uh, so this is the the the, uh, the package for you. Uh, the next one is uh, the global load balancer. So if you're only really interested in, in a global load balancer, then uh, and not all the other bits and pieces, then uh, you can actually just choose this particular plan, and this will just give you the uh, the, the load balancer. Um, and and uh, so, so that makes that uh, quite attractive if all you want to do is load balancing. And similarly, if all you're interested in is, is the security, so it gives you the DDoS protection, gives you the web application firewall, um, and some other bits and pieces as well, then you just uh, check the security plan. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to quickly show you how to uh, how to create one of these. I'm going to create a standard plan, so I'm just going to make sure that is checked, and uh, then I'm going to do the usual thing of giving it a service name. So I'm going to call this Internet Services, and then just call it FSS after that. Uh, it's IM enabled, so I need to select a resource group. So I'm going to put this into my, uh, let's put this into my Flying High resource group. And then I can give it some tags as well. So I can let's do that. So let's call this put a tag at FSS uh, security because it's from my security. And uh, let's leave it at that for now. So then all I do is click create. And uh, hopefully this won't take too long. I'm on, I'm on a slightly slow internet connection, um, but hopefully this won't take too long. And there we go, that's taking around about 20 seconds, I guess. So um, so the first thing you actually need to do to, to really use this is to um, actually connect your domain, your application's domain. So as I said, I, I don't actually have a domain that I can connect to this, um, so, um, so, so I can't actually show you this in use. But once you've got your domain, so an example would be cloud.ibm.com, but obviously you need to have your own domain. Um, then you can click the let's get started button and then put in your your domain name so let's uh, put one called james .com. so um, so what you then do is connect and continue so so that would then um, connect it up and you could then go on to start setting your DNS and um, and doing other bits and pieces so I, I don't actually own that domain I don't have that domain so um, so I can't actually show you much more than uh, much more than that um, so we can quickly go through some of these screens. So, um, so from an account point of view, um, you can uh, configure your identity and access management through here. Um, you can uh, decide on some custom pages. So, if for instance you you um, you want to configure some custom error, error pages, so for some reason your website is having a, a, an issue, rather than just show a um, rather than just show a, a, a nasty error page, you can actually set up in here. Some, um, some some different error pages that maybe your user could see instead. So for instance, you've, you've got a country block, um, you can put in a, a nicer page than just having a, a, a 404 error or something similar like that. And similarly with the other, uh, other bits and pieces here as well. On here as well, you can see some logs um, too. So you can, uh, so if, you're HT, if, you, if you want to see the HTTP requests, you can have them uploaded to cloud storage. Um, and uh, you can then go and go and view them there. Um, so here's where you sort of do some of the metrics things. So, um, so for instance, let's have a look at uh, rate limiting. So, um, so this is where you would actually configure um, your, um, uh, your your rate limiting. 
um, I'd need to actually upgrade this this service because it's only available on the enterprise plan. But as you can see, all of this is fairly easy and, and reasonably si simple to use. It's all about pointing and clicking. Um, so, for instance, this is for the web application firewall. Um, and um, again, I can't really do much because I haven't configured my domain yet. But um, if I were to uh, turn this on, then um, what I would then be able to do is actually start customizing my rules uh, or start bringing my rules and, and, and uh, configuring it that way. Uh, similarly for um, things like firewall rules. Um, so again, I can't actually create any here because I haven't got my domain configured. Uh, but again, it's just base of uh, you just need to click the create firewall rule and then start configuring your rules. If you wanted to um, change your plan, then again, you can you can just do that through this screen. Okay, so that's a really quick tour of the uh, the IBM Cloud and how to um, create a, an internet services um, instance and then just going into the screens and showing you where to connect your domain and get started with that. And then obviously if, if I had one, then, then I could uh, start to show you how to, um, how to configure it. So but, but as I say, these screens are quite simple uh, and uh, hopefully if you do configure this for your own domain, um, you shouldn't have too many uh, problems um, configuring your service and hopefully this has given you a bit of an idea of, as to how to do that. Okay, so that's it for this video on internet services. I hope it's been useful and you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have and you, you haven't already, then how about subscribing to the channel uh, for notifications for when the next video's been released. And uh, hopefully I will see you next time.